So I guess it's safe to say that the interest in Star Wars Outlaws is actually low. If you look at the like-dislike ratio of the latest trailer, you're going to see something that may or may not surprise you. I mean, it depends on how you want to go with it. But at the end of the day, you know, it's something that you must acknowledge. 28,000 likes to 35,000 dislikes. There are different reasons as to why this might be the case. There is the side of the Star Wars fandom. There's a side of the gaming culture war that is ongoing and raging. I mean, I'm not <laughs> fighting any war with anybody. Many of you know I'm really knee deep into some projects right now that I'm working on, and I'll be happy to show you guys very soon on the Gamer Dad channel. But another one that is actually quite pertinent that I think if you think, okay, maybe the fandom and how Star Wars has been treated really comes to a much more tangible and material problem for a lot of people is the pricing. So yesterday I mentioned that the pricing for the pre-order was out, but there was no, or at least at the time, there were no PC requirements to know how the game is going to run. This is very interesting because it's interesting more than anything else that once you're able to pinpoint the PC requirement, it's almost telling that you can also tell the console uh, you know, performance that you're going to get. However, uh, with all of this somewhere in uh, limbo, you have a uh, base game 70, um, what's the name of this one? Gold Edition 100, Ultimate 129, and then you have a subscription. For some people, depending on the regions that they're in, this $129 version is like 160 bucks for them. Now, I'm a division player. I'm not going to sit here and say, oh, this is a bad thing. No, we paid 100 bucks for the gold edition of like the division one. And I think that gold edition was at least 80 bucks or 90 bucks. Some people paid for the division two's ultimate edition or whatever it is. That was the highest edition that came out at launch. So that edition was probably around 120. I paid for gold that I bought on, you know, uh, I think CD keys using, you know, CD keys uses uh, the regional pricing, which I think is a fair way to price the game anyways. Uh, since you're going to sell millions of copies, you're not going to miss the extra dollars or maybe you will. Who cares? At the end of the day, we buy these kinds of copies of games, but the division community is one community. I feel like Ubisoft Massive needs to quickly move into amending its relationship with relationship with actually not just amending its relationship with the relationship has been off and on, whatever it may be, but ensuring that those that are in the pipeline that have felt disenfranchised do not have a reason to stay away completely or permanently. What I mean by that is you have your core division community right now, right? Those are the folk that are going to play the division and will be happy to play a new division game. Some already are tired of the current division two game. They've done it all their way. Fine. But there are some that have not necessarily been satisfied. And for reasons that Massive already knows based on a lot of the patches, the implementation, they have not necessarily been reached out to. This is the community that Ubisoft Massive needs to go ahead and find. Why? If not, if they do not take these steps, they risk ending up like the Star Wars Outlaws trailer. Star Wars has successfully decimated its audience base. This is not something that we need to sit here and reiterate. We've seen the way the audiences have treated the game. Whether you bring the best graphics, whether you bring the best gameplay, whether you bring the best beautifully designed open world, this is not going to help you if your fans are not happy with how you're treating them. In the Tom Clancy world, there is at least the possibility to go back and get these fans back in place. Simple implementations, or I would say much simpler implementations like, you know, ensuring that PvP has as much content as has been requested. Easy peasy. Go ahead and rehash what you already have. Add more on top of it when you're launching the Division 3. Very simple. Ensure that PvE and PvP basically maintain separate parameters at the end of the day. Unless you want to continue to keep the so-called conflict or the so-called, uh, uh, I would say, tension that makes the game seem more dramatic, but that continues to hurt your player base. So ensure that all parameters are separate. Easy peasy. You've already started doing it anyways. You made modifiers in the dark zone. You made modifiers in the PvE side of things so that PvE enemies basically scale. Ensure that content is consistent and not necessarily delayed. Easy peasy. From your first and second game, you already learned what your capabilities are. You already learned what your timelines can look like. So act accordingly. 
I think this is a very good lesson to learn. And Ubisoft Massive is still very fortunate that they have a fan base or at least an install base that might be able to salvage what these two games are about to do to the company financially. Because if you're launching your Starship or your flagship game of 2024 and your you know response is already looking like this, not because you did anything wrong, by the way. Don't get me wrong. I'm not saying that Ubisoft Massive in this context of my video anyways, has done anything wrong. We can we can actually explore some other areas, by the way. Uh, yes, I know about the community manager, you know, Twitter posts and all that stuff. That's something that I intend to basically look at. I, I want to gather all the information pertaining that. And then we can highlight that here in this video. But so far, this is as a result of Star Wars, independent of that. This is a result of what has been happening in the Star Wars universe for the longest time. So I wanted to go ahead and highlight this in this video. Don't want to say too much just yet. And we need to be paying very close attention to how this is actually progressing because, again, I guess it is, you know, come back home, Ubisoft Massive. Come back home. Make the game that made you guys famous. Make the game that put you guys on the map. Uh, some of you may or may not know, Ubisoft Massive is actually an act. It used to be an Activision studio, by the way. Uh, Ubisoft acquired the studio and basically the division put them on the map, even though they were already supporting, uh, you know, Assassin's Creed and uh, uh, what was the other game? Far Cry. I think they did a Far Cry game and then some other titles. But man, the division was the game that pretty much broke ground for this studio. And I think they need to basically just own a lot of the Tom Clancy universe. Don't worry about all these other IPs. You have the control over this IP. You know how the fans respond and react to them. You, you basically know how to, you know, pretty much, you know, uh, in my opinion, anyways, for the most part, you're able to tell what your fans need and have a direct line of communication to them without any external influences. Rather than going to make games that are basically externally influenced and, you know, it, you don't have control as to how its core fan bases can actually see or at least perceive the game itself. Let me hear your thoughts in the comment section. There's so much here to talk about. And uh, hopefully we'll talk pretty soon in another one. Thank you guys for watching. Peace out.